Welcome, welcome to the Java programming tutorial. Um, what we're going to be looking at is um, um, reading from a file and writing to a file. And it's just the same as we've done before. I've commented this, I'll put it back in again. What you have is a stream and what you have is a reader. So a reader will read like strings, characters, lines and all the rest of that and the stream will read bytes and so the, the, the bytes are like ASCII Unicode and represent characters on the screen and so if we go back, what we've done here is we created a print writer we created a buffered input stream for the stream and we created a buffered reader now with the file it's the same but this the file is the exact same. We created a buffered reader to read a file. Given a name equals buffered inside inside the, the buffered reader we put the the class file reader. File reader and now to create an object. And inside the constructor we put the path of the file. Right, that's a path, right? You don't have to do the whole path with the same directory is it's a source files but I just done that to show you and that's the name of the file and it's in it's a string so it's in double quotes and this this will not create the file for you so the file's got to be there or it will create an error but you can see it's the exact same as it's the exact same as this this one here, buffered reader, we give it a name equals new buffered reader and what we've done is we put inside a class a class um, to turn this system in into a reader and the reader um, was conf the system, the, the stream was converted into a reader and then the reader was able to go into the buffered reader with the file, we're not doing input stream reader what we are doing is we are doing file reader so that's the difference and we don't have a system a system in its file reader that replaces and so all we need to do is pass file reader is give the file and the path and that will if that file exists it will execute it will execute the, the command which we've got a system, we've all we've done is, this is a command here, fr, what we called it, dot read, rhyme, and what we've done is just use the system dot alt print, and printed that method out to screen. But because it's a file, you can, an input output, you need exceptions, like this is a, an old exception, and because it's a file, we need to use the, the try, And catch. Right, what I've done here, I've got try and we've got the braces and the code within the braces will be executed. But what, what, why it's a try and catch is we're going to try this. Um, if no errors happen, the code's going to be executed, but if an error happens, we've got a catch. So we're going to catch it with a bare hands. In brackets, and what we're going to do here is we've got in out exceptions, we've got file exceptions, and what we, what happens here is we give the, the file exception or the IO exception that we're going to catch, and that's an object, that's a file. This here is a file, just the same as this is a file. And so what we're going to do is create an object, so that's a data type, and then we're going to give it any name we want to access it. Though we don't have to access it, you'll see what I mean. Just checking the spell and I forgot the X. So I an out exception thrown and what we need to do is give it name normally just give it an E, but you could give it the anything at all. Anything, um, right. We 
could just do it, call it anything that we see there. We can give it any name. Normally use E. So this is how it's accessed. And within this we have within this we have brackets and braces. <coughs> and the braces will when when this is when an error when one of these pieces of code produces an error, the catch will catch it. And do instead of doing this it'll do the code that you put in here. So if there was no file, you'd go right and you would go sorry, no file found. And so this would go to screen and so semicolon to end the command. And so system dot print L sorry no file no no file found and when we run it there is no file there we've not created the file yet so this is going to produce an error and it's going to get caught here by the catch and it's going to print out this message so it did not do that <laughs> let's see why right, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to comment out this code again commented out this code um, and we'll done it and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, so that's it was caught before we didn't even leak here. Um what happens is we we're going through this code and it was expecting us to to pass information into the program that was waiting for it. So we didn't get through this part. We didn't get through this part here yet. So we didn't even reach it. So now that we reached it an error was produced because there was no file and so it was caught by the exception and the code that was within these braces was executed and so instead of your program crashing because unforeseen circumstances that a file was meant to be there and someone's deleted it it jumps on to another piece of code to keep the program going sends a message saying sorry there was no file there go and check those files and moves on to the next lines of code it's supposed to execute and so that's what try and catch us we're going to go into that in detail but because in and out we do need these exceptions um, I'm showing you it and so I'll run it again you'll see that this error appears sorry no file found and it would go into execute code without stopping and so what we're going to do now is create create the files so it's in source. Yeah, it's in source. So if we just right click new file and it's called test test file dot text save and if we create another one well, first we'll go back to the, the first one so we can see what it's called. Um, new file and it's called test byte dot text finish. So we've got those two files here and now they've appeared up there we can see what's inside them. And so if we if we, we make that smaller, go back to the first ass and do we call it test bytes? No, we're gonna to have to change the name. Well we can do that here, we can say test bytes. Test bytes instead of test bytes. So everything's okay. Now we've got these two files. And there's no error. And it's produced now because there was nothing inside the file. So what we're doing, we're trying to read this file here. We come here we are just, uh, just checking this out here yeah I'm going to change yeah so I think I'm going to right so what is this not nothing on here so uh, return now so if we do this And 
like that, it's not how you spell someone. So, so we've done this sign of code, so it's going to produce this sign of code. And so if we go back and run the program, and you can see what's happened here is we've created this buffered reader to read this file. And and what we've done, we've used um, read line. So we've called it fr, so we've done fr.readline and we've passed it into this system dot alt print and it's 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 um, read this line and passed it here and printed it to screen right and the next part is say no this time see what happens no the next part So the next part is what we're doing is, is we've, what we've done is created a reader and passed we've, we've read a string and in here in here we've created a stream. So what we're doing is we're passing an integer to the screen. If this works, I'm not too sure. Um, but we've created this file here and that's that file up there but when we, when we, I don't think the changes are getting put to it um, that's why we're getting that message so if I run, if I do 31 right, it's done that part of the programme there's no error so everything was okay um, and then we get this here See, I've not, I've, I've done yes and it didn't appear here, and I've done no and it didn't appear here. So I'm not too sure about one. To say no, run it again. Um, say, say yes. Right, I'm not too sure what's going on there. If I come here, it's this one here. Uh, if I open open with text editor no that's not doing it open with see if we can get notepad external programs I don't think this is working for some reason, so let's go back and see what's. Yeah, th what it is, th I paused it to find out what was wrong, and it's the same as the other one. You've got to use um, flush and close the, the stream once you're finished with it. And so we can pass whatever integer we want in here. Um, what what this will do is this will pass um, an ASCII character and what we'll do is we'll do like 215 and we'll find out what 215 is. We don't want to go too low because if we go too low it's going to half a, maybe half a, like, a control character, like escape or control something and, and we don't want that. We don't want some of these uh, ASCII characters are control keys and so if we run the program and we go to text bytes. Yes, we want the changes. X is X is equal to two five. And so if we change it to six, you can imagine what six is going to be. Sixteen. And we we'll come here. It's going to accept the changes. And no, we can't imagine because we wouldn't imagine that. I thought it was the one alphabet there. But these are characters that are inside the ASCII code and the unipod whatever one it's using and so so if we do 70 see if we went on the alphabet and we come here and that there is a special character right and so what I'm, what I'm trying to do is get to some ASCII characters so we do 150 Maybe this is one. Yes. 
So 154 is the minus sign. And so uh, what happens if we go 151? It's still a minus sign. Let's see, it's not going to. I don't know my, my ASCII characters. <laughs> this is the problem. So if we go 60 and run it now. That's that's actually a space. If I hit the backspace, you can see. So that was a character for space, for the space bar. And let's see if we go back. If I do seventy, if I do eighty, I'm hoping this is part of the alphabet. Well, that there is just the single quote. So if I do 90, I, should, I need to be on it. Uh, I should have done, I checked the ASCII table, sorry. And so I don't want to waste time. And that's uh, three quarters. So you're getting the characters that's in the ASCII code. So if I do 200, hopefully I'm on the 200. Trying to get to the alphabet or numbers or something. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Right, there's there's a capital E, um, but it's not um, for the English alphabet because it's hyphenated. Um, um, forget what you call them. It's got an accent on it or umlaut. And so if I go back, if I push up a little bit, maybe one. Three five. Keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully, I'm onto something here. It's taking time. It's taking time. Right, there you go. That's an E. I'm not with a German E. It's with two. Um, don't know what it is. Two dots at the top. Right, that's all. That's Germanic. And like, right, but you get the idea. So every single character that's used is a part of ASCII code, and the ASCII code is a number. And because this is a stream, and we're writing the stream, when we, we pass a code, it's going to, whatever that code represents, it's going to print to that file. That's what a stream is. And the difference between a reader, a reader and and the stream is the reader actually is reading the um, strings, words, sentences, and all that. Um, and it's also the writer is also writing all these strings and sentences, it's not using ASCII codes, that's the difference between the two of them. And we use the, the file reader to to open the file. If that wasn't there, it throws an error, so you need to try and catch. And we use the, for, this is the file reader is for the reader, not the stream. And the file output stream is for the bytes, it's for the, the stream. And if we come back to the second class, you can see that we've got buffered input stream and we've got buffered reader. And if we go back, that's what we've got here, but instead of buffered, we've got file. And then we've got buffered reader there. Um, and instead of just output stream, we've got file output stream. So it's all beginning to, to you should be beginning to see like this, 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 um, there's a pattern emerging that, that that you'll become accustomed to. The difference, the, the, what you have for files is a file reader, a file writer, file input stream, which we've got here, and a file output stream. And we also have a class called file for creating files. And so we're going to do that as well. So again, I hope I've not wasted too much time. And again, thank you. Thank you for, for listening.